a simple question. Are electric trucks ready to replace traditional trucks? To find out, we decided to take on an epic road trip by driving the Ford F-150 Lightning over 3,500 miles from Boulder, Colorado to the furthest place you can drive a vehicle in the U.S. and that is Dead Horse, Alaska. What makes this such an arduous journey is that we have to charge our way up the entire spine of North America in places, well, where there is virtually no charging. So sit back and relax and enjoy the journey because we certainly did. Yeah, it's looking a little dirty. That is uh, one uh, dirty electric truck. Uh, so I've made it all the way uh, to Fairbanks, Alaska, and I brought a present uh, for the Lightning. This is uh, from the Colorado Fairing Company, uh, and it should hopefully uh, help with, uh, with our aero position, because right now the truck's not doing great in terms of getting full range, and we need full range uh, to make it all the way up to Dead Horse, because at least in my mind, now that I'm here, okay, I know it's a little self-centered, but this is where the adventure starts. Uh, so, let's hit the road. Now in the last video, if you recall, Andre left the Lightning in Seattle after camping in it. But it took an entire team to get the Lightning to Fairbanks. So let's go back in time and see how we managed to get both the Lightning and of course our chase truck to Fairbanks. All right, we made it through the maze of traffic to Wally Park where Andre has left us. I love that fairing, Andre. He's left us the Lightning and he built a fairing for the top for aerodynamics but uh, let's see if the key works hopefully it's the right key yeah we're in business hey get to go to Bellingham now and then Alaska of course power. Now we just got to have enough cord to get over to the truck. All right, there we go. We're charging right there. All right, so we're plugged in and the truck says it'll be charged by 9 a.m. tomorrow. So that's perfect because we don't catch the ferry until 3 o'clock tomorrow. So we'll be fully charged by the time uh, we get on the ferry. Perfect. So we're, we're now at 93% and we have 200 miles of range. So that's good. We're not going very far. We're going about 30 miles to get to the ferry and then load it up on the ferry. I think we're gonna go ahead and do a fast charge right before we get on the ferry. That way when we get off in, Atla in Alaska, it'll be at nearly full capacity. going to make breakfast using the lightning. We're going to make eggs, toast, and coffee. Actually, this is pretty cool. I made coffee, I made eggs and I made toast out of the back of an electric truck with no propane. Nothing but a few appliances that I got at Goodwill and a fork and a spatula. And it's like being in a five-star hotel. We're south of Bellingham in Fairhaven, and we've got our geocache today. I'm going to give you a couple hints if you're going searching for the geocache. It's near a creek named Padden, next to something evil. So watch me as I hide this.
right, there's your landmark right there. Let's see if you can find it. We made it safely across the states down here in the lower states, headed to the upper state, yeah, the great state of Alaska. We're proud we went through Washington, so we're gonna put our sticker on here. We're in Bellingham right now, just about ready to get on the ferry. And I'm excited about this. This is gonna be fun. Now we didn't take the Alaskan Highway and a good thing because it got washed out because we simply don't have the bandwidth. Instead we kind of cheated. We put both trucks on a ferry in Bellingham and took it all the way up to Haines, Alaska. Now of course we did have to go through Canada to get to Fairbanks but more on that later. We made it to Fairbanks. It was no small feat. And I don't know if you can tell right now, but it's almost midnight and it's still pretty light outside. I've never experienced this before. It's, it's quite incredible. There's two flow chargers right here in Fairbanks. These are the most northern chargers, fast chargers in North America. Here we got two things we need. We need our phone and we need the charger. Let's get started. All right, we're plugged in. Hey, we got our Flow Charger app. We're simply gonna push start. Then we're gonna hold it up to the charger. Look, the red light came on. We're gonna push start. Let's go back over. Hey, and look, we got a blue light right here. It shows that we are down low, only 30 miles left on this beast. We've gotta get all the way to 100% because, <laughs> The next place we're going, there's no more fast chargers. In fact, there's no more chargers. So from here on up, we rely strictly on outlets, hopefully 240 outlets. We want to thank Flow Charger for sponsoring TFL EV, as well as Northern Lightning. And the days are only going to get longer the farther north we go. But we want to thank Flow for getting us this far. On the small screen on the dash it says a hundred percent will be at 3 12 a.m. so I'm just gonna sack out in the back of the truck that's the joy about having a camper on the back is we can just sleep right here so I'm gonna get in back I'll see you guys in the morning David look I brought your present welcome Roman yeah yeah well that just worked for me you know <laughs> I don't I don't mind I'm anxious to see what it does to our range uh, do, so do we have tools I do. I brought drills, screwdrivers. All right, good. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. So. I brought a fairing and I brought a ways to mount it. Oh, good. Yeah. So, yeah. does it have like a, a bracketry that you have I in your bracketry, yeah. in your suitcase? Yes, I brought bracketry and I got stopped <laughs> everywhere I went. Oh yeah, I bet. <laughs> yeah, it's probably it looks like a weapon, doesn't it? It does. <laughs> all <laughs> right. Funny. All right. Well, let's 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 go to the charger. Um, top this thing off and maybe we can install this bad boy. Okay. Huh? All right. Cool. Yeah. Hey guys, so we're here in Fairbanks, Alaska, and to bring you along on our trip, uh, of course we've got our stash of stickers and shirts and assorted other goodies. I'm giving them to Meadow here. Thank you so much, and we're Meadow, excited. To Meadow's have part of the visit. Gold Valley Electric yeah. Association, the local electric company, so uh, we're gonna leave it with you. Okay. And when okay. somebody watches this video, all they have to do is come here to your offices, and yeah. you're open when? We're open Monday through Friday from 8.30 to 4.30. And then whoever comes here first, you get it. All we ask is that you put on the shirt, take a picture of us, and it's a Ask a TFL truck. We'll let the other people know that this uh, box of goodies has been claimed. Uh, and uh, yeah, 
Simple as that. Thank and then you, you're, you're leaving more of these along the route? Yes. Uh -huh. All the way up to Dalton? Yeah. Okay. This would be the exciting. easiest one to get. Yes, one of the, yes, I was going to say. You're going to have to work much, much harder <laughs> for, for the, the rest others. of them. Yes, yes. <laughs> well, thank and, you very much. Yeah, and thank you. And we're so glad you're here and charging on our chargers. Yeah, it's Pretty cool. exciting for us. How long have these been here? Less than a year, right? Yeah, less than a year. We were really excited. We got them in in November and we were wondering how much action they would get in Alaska in the winter. But uh, we actually do a lot of cold weather testing here, so they have seen a lot of vehicles coming through and EVs that are testing for the future and doing their cold weather testing here. Well, uh, you know, this is not the first time we've been here and hopefully not the last time. Yeah, hopefully time. not the last. last we've time. been having yeah. some good discussions about yeah. other vehicles you might come up, bring up, and we would be excited for that, that uh, potential. Uh, for I sure. would love that. Thank good, you. Good. Yeah, please come back and visit. All right, David. So, um, you know, we're really getting terrible economy. I mean, it's it's gotten really bad, right? So we're at 1.7 miles per kilowatt hour is that 1. right 1.8 1. 1.8 yeah uh, and part of that of course is this camper shell the weight of it isn't as important as the aero effect yeah uh, and people don't understand that when you're driving exponentially you use more power the faster you go and so obviously making something as aero as possible aerodynamic as possible makes it much more slippery and makes it much more efficient so uh, our friends at colorado fairing uh, made us, and I haven't seen this yet, so I'm super excited, made us this fairing that I think we can uh, add, and I was going to say we replace the fairing we have, but maybe what we do is we add it to the fairing that we have. Oh, look at that, huh? So that's pretty. That, yeah. is, that is pretty. That's, is that the same color as the Ford? Yeah, yeah, they match the color, and look, they've got our whole trip here. Oh, cool. From the inside passage up to Tuck, is it Tuck or Tuck? Tuck. Tuck. And of course, we're here in Fairbanks, and now we're about to do this part, which is going to be the hardest part, right? Fairbanks, Coldfoot, Dead Horse, yeah. Ocean. All right, I just finished this. The guys at the fairing company actually had this molding on their fairing. I took it off and put it on the one that Andre made here. And I think it looks pretty good. Plus, it protects the paint when this thing starts flapping in the wind. All right, so David, I, I want to get a pool noodle. And if we were in Florida, it'd be no problem. But in Alaska, pool noodles are- No noodles? No noodles, but I did get some uh, Something else we could hopefully shove underneath the... Uh... Well, this would be great. When we run out of electricity on the side of the highway, we got something to do. Are you a basketball guy, a soccer guy, or a football guy? Well, I'd say this This is a little too bright. Okay. So let's put that in there and see what happens. How about one on the other side? It might work. Yeah, Want to try? Yeah. Like I said, no, no pool noodles in Alaska here. Oh, perfecto. Look at that. Oh, look at that. Oh, now it's sticking up nice and yeah. tall. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You want to put the football in the middle? No, let's save that for the side of the road when we're stranded. All right, there you go. I'm going long. Go long, David. Oh, nice. And there he goes to the end zone. Before we head out on the Dalton Highway, we're trying to get as much range as possible because we really need 253 miles to make it from here in Fairbanks all the way to Coldfoot. Unfortunately, the truck at 100% says we have 228 miles of range. So now we need to find another 12, 15 miles of range, David. I think we can get another 15. Yeah, pump up the tires? Yeah, inflating the tires. All right, um, and then going slower, because the slower you go, uh, the better uh, your uh, miles per kilowatt hour. Right now, we're averaging 1.8, which is actually pretty atrocious, and we really need to be more like a 2 or 2.2. Hold on, crap back here. Oh. <laughs> I brought everything but the kitchen sink. Ah, there's a the compressor. I did bring this. That was sweet. A compressor. Nice. Look at that. And tow straps when we have to tow ourselves to the next <laughs> charging station. <laughs> there is no more charging stations. <laughs> We're done with charging stations. So David was worried that we'd use some of the battery to air up the truck, but it doesn't matter really. Um, airing up trucks or powering refrigerators, 
or having the radio on, none of that really uses a lot of energy compared to how much energy it uses to actually move the truck into the wind. So we started 99 and we're still, I checked, at 99. The truck just told us that there are no uh, charging stations on the way and that there's insufficient range to actually make it to Prudhoe Bay. But we knew that, right, David? We did. So we formed a cutting plan, and that is we borrowed another Ford F-150 with onboard power. So if worse comes to worse, we can use our uh, camera and or chase truck to actually charge up this truck. But I don't want to do that, David. What, do you want to pull it? We could pull it. And yeah. then people always talk about, like, hey, maybe you could pull to it. Pull, tow pull charge it. it. Yeah. yeah. Ford doesn't allow that. Well, I think it would work. I, yeah, I know Ford doesn't allow it, but just think about it. The trailer going down the Ike gauntlet was recharging the truck by 8% at the bottom of the hill. I so, agree. So does it matter if you push it down the hill or pull it? I don't think it matters. So I think in theory, you could tow it. Yeah. Um, but, but that would void the warranty. Exactly, and that's not in theory. So if you look over there, look at your numbers, right? 224 miles of range, but we need to go 264 miles. You see it there? Well, I'm in a hyper mile. Are you um, are you doing the one foot thing or not? No, I should. I probably should. One pedal driving is on. Let go. Of the, let go. It should break. Yeah, it's on. Yeah, yeah it wasn't on. before though. Yeah, you're on. Yeah. You're good. There we go. Okay. All right. We're off. And the coolest thing is, in about 100 miles, we'll hit the Arctic Circle. Have you been to the Arctic Circle? Never been above the Arctic Circle. You're gonna go to the Arctic Circle today. I'm already as far <laughs> north as I've ever been. And you're gonna. Not only go to the Arctic Circle, but you're going to see the amount of mosquito wildlife yeah. <laughs> at the Arctic Circle. <laughs> so let's try to stay to like 50 miles an hour. Okay. I think uh, I think if we go any faster than that, we're definitely not going to run. All right, I'm going to I'm going to hyper mile. Yeah, because we're also going to be on dirt roads. Yeah. So I mean, the combination of inflating the tires, adding a wind deflector, uh, and trying to stay pretty slow. Uh, should help, but I'm not holding my breath. I mean, according to the truck, we're like, gosh, 40 miles short of where we need to be. Yeah. That kind of sucks. message we got well it's not a surprise we knew that Roman <laughs> but at least it's good to know that the car the truck the lightning yeah. knows this <laughs> yeah but the other thing I know is that we've got a hundred and sixty one miles to get to Coldfoot and only 115 miles of range and it's been staying about 45 to 55 miles difference the whole time so yeah it told us from the very start we were gonna be short of charge well, you know, we're using a 1.8 uh, miles, or we're doing 1.8 miles per kilowatt, which isn't grand. And I think a lot of that has to do with topography, right? There's a lot of hills. Yeah, not so much our weight, <coughs> although we are pretty heavy. We did we did look at the onboard, onboard scale. scale, and we were pretty much maxed out. Our 1,675-pound <laughs> payload has been completely utilized <laughs> between you, me, uh, our videographer and of course uh, the fact that we've got a camper so um, and a lot of gear yeah so uh, we're not gonna make it uh, but the good news is the sign right here right there's a sign so we've got 150 58 miles of cold foot which we're not gonna make because we have 114 miles of range but the Yukon River David uh, has a camp basically a restaurant right across from it okay so what we can do is we can cross the river Go get some lunch, and then I can go try to beg us some uh, electricity yeah. from the proprietor. You're gonna get down on your knees and say, "No, no, no, please, no." Look, I, I, oh, I, you're just gonna get out your wallet. I, I came prepared. Look, how many look, hundreds you got? Look, there? I'm rolling, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Well, it might take that. <laughs> That'd be the world's most expensive truck fill-up. <laughs> well. I I'm, imagine I'm, I'm hoping this will do it. There, there's a lot of people <laughs> apprehensive because they don't have a clue how much energy an electric truck or an electric car might take. Let's be honest and say, hey, yeah. you know, we're trying to do something that nobody else has done, and that's drive a truck up to Dead Horse, yeah. an electric truck. Would you be so kind and out of the goodness of your heart, help us make this uh, first ever journey? And, uh, and they could be the generous sort and say, heck yeah. 
Come on over, I'll and show you where to and then, plug and, in. And then if not, and even if they do, we'll pay them anyway. You know, it's, yeah. it's not about the money, it's it's about the adventure. So Well, I could tell them you'll do the dishes. All right, now that's a lot. You know, I grew up in the restaurant business, David. <laughs> And uh, I, I've, I've washed a lot of dishes in my life, but I, you know what I'm really good at? What? I'm really good at peeling potatoes. I can peel oh, okay. potatoes like, I, right. could, I could peel like 100 potatoes in like 15 minutes. Well, I'm not I'll, joking. And I'll mop the floor. Yeah, all right, so I'll peel, you mop. Okay. All right, done. Unfortunately, the truck won't make it to Coldfoot, uh, at least not with the amount of charge that we have. The good news is they do have electricity here that they charge $50 to up to, but the bad news is, let me show you, follow me. Seven of them, but the bad news is, <laughs> yeah, 120. I figure uh, our lightning would probably take about five days to charge up on 120, uh, which uh, is not going to help us because uh, we need to get up to Dead Horse hopefully tomorrow night, not five days from now. So uh, David's in there checking, see if he can maybe find like a washing machine or a dryer outlet which would give us 240. But I got a sneaking suspicion that our cutting plan is going to have to be used the first stop on our epic trip, which is well, not the first stop, but the first stop on Dalton, and that is we're going to have to use the hybrid to power up the uh, lightning while we're having lunch to get enough juice to get up to Coldfoot because uh, look guys we're you know we're breaking new ground here uh, and uh, sometimes you gotta break a few eggs to make an omelet or in this case use a little bit of old dinosaur juice I know you hate it when it's say dinosaur juice I know I know to make uh, an electric truck go zoom <laughs> Yep, it's charging. We are charging. Charging at uh, 1 16 a.m. tonight. So we are definitely charging. So we started out with 88 miles of range and 40% of the battery. Uh, so let's see how long, how much we can get while we have some lunch. All right, David, we ran into a problem. We kept blowing the fuse. Yeah, we're not made for 40 yeah. amps. So, so we brought uh, two different uh, chargers. We brought the four charger, which is a 30 amp. Yeah. And then we bought a 40 amp to give us, you know, a higher speed of charge. It doesn't like the 40 amp. No, it blows it. It blows it. It asks for too much power. So I think we're going to have to go with the four 30 amp. All right, let me, let me, let me plug it into the truck. Okay. All right. Come here. Just enough cord. <laughs> so the difference is significant. Uh, 47, 417 a.m. So it added three hours by switching from the 40 amp to the 30 amp. But we don't really care about that because we basically just need another 50 miles of range. Um, we don't need to fill this thing up completely. So I think two hours, three hours of charging should, us get, should get us to Coldfoot. Uh, so now it's running, she's happy. Yeah. So, so what's your name? My name is uh, Bill Heath, I'm the owner of my own tour business uh -huh. here in Fairbanks, Alaska. So you bring people up to Eric Circle? I do, all, all right. the time. And you got some questions, Bill, what, what can I answer? Well, I, I, I see you guys, you got this new fang dangle electric stuff up here. We do, yeah. We just don't have a lot of it in Alaska. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> Principal reasons would be yeah. the cold. Yeah. But I mean, that's why Alaska still has less than a million people in it, right? Right. So coming up this road, winter time, where are you going to plug in these fancy trucks? Where? Where are you going to, where are you going to plug them in? That's why we had to bring our own inverter with us. Yeah, we had to bring our own power supply. So, because so I pull in here my gas, and the very first thought I think I have, and I'm listening to you guys just a, just a tad bit. Yeah. And I walk back out, and I see you robbing Peter to pay Paul just to make make it to where. Where are you going to cold go? foot tonight? You're going to cold foot tonight. It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. When I was here eight years ago, you couldn't do any of this. Even last year, you couldn't do any.
any of it, right? Because mm -hmm. there were no charging stations right, in right, Alaska. Right. And now there's fast chargers between Fairbanks and Anchorage, so you can go between the two. Okay. Uh, but yeah, the winter is, a, you, you're exactly right. The winter is going to be a huge problem, oh. especially what you guys get like minus 40 up here. We can see, I've seen 70 below since I've been out here. Oh my God. Oh. Wow. That's driving as a security guard on the pipeline yeah. for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Having lived here for as long as I have and yep. seen what I've seen, and I'm not originally from here, but where are you from? Well, I'm from Maine originally, another cold state, okay, but not cold like here. I've seen Fairbanks at 57 below. I've seen it 70 below up here in the really deep pockets, and you're praying, baby Jesus, keep that serpentine belt going, and that's in a gas vehicle, yeah. okay? I don't know what is intrinsically different in the electric vehicle, but I, I, I got to tell you, I'm not, I'm not tempted at all. Huh? Now that is like that. That is like version 20.0 of the internal combustion engine, right? Probably. We, we started with the Model T. That is a Model T. So today, yeah, that probably doesn't work up here in the winter. But you know, give it 10 years, give it 20 years, and maybe it will. The problem is in the winter you're using energy to heat the battery, so you're using the energy you normally use to move the truck to keep the battery warm. Like you said, they, they will evolve. Yeah. So you know, you got you got the Model T here compared to a rocket ship. Give it I'm going to stick with the rocket ship for time being. Fair enough. You know, for now. Yeah. For now. And the other problem is the Ford electric van only has 100 miles of range. Oh. Yeah, I know. I can't do that with some of my tours. Yeah, of course. Oh yeah. Well, well, thank you very much. I love your perspective. Really appreciate it, guys. And be safe out there and. Uh, any, I love any, seeing any, this. Any tips going up there? Anything you want to let us know? So the 18 wheelers rule the road. Yeah. You meet them on a hill, let them have the hill. Okay. Stopping on a blind corner, poor choice. Mm. There are at least four or five people right now that are on pedal bikes. Be aware of them because the soft shoulders that are wet, if they try to pull off, guess where they go? They down in the ditch and they break a uh, collarbone because this mud has got calcium in it as well. That's how they treat the road, blade it, bake it, and then it's really good for quite a while until the rain comes and makes it, oh, it's gooey. And that's what sticks to the van like like it is there, okay? The same thing's going to happen to your electric rigs. You guys will have a fun time. Thank you. All right, you bet. We're at what, 65 kilowatts, maybe a little bit more. Okay. And normally the truck gets 320 miles on a full charge so so on a half a charge if we didn't have all this stuff in the tires we should be able to go 150 miles mm, right? Yeah, right if we didn't have the added weight and well it's the, the weight I don't think is a big deal as the wind resistance right so we should go we should be able to go 150 miles on half a charge yeah. but maybe if we slow it down to 30 we can actually go 120 miles I don't think that's asking too much no no I mean we'll find out I mean weight does does create a little bit of drag, but wind resistance we think is more. The problem is the but, hills. It's oh the hills. yeah, that's that's a factor that we haven't put into the equation. That's what's killing us. Are we going to be going uphill from the river? Because we're at the low point in the river, so we're going to be going uphill for quite a ways. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we got some up. <laughs> yeah, that's where weight comes into the factor. Here. Yeah, that's where it's hurting us. Yeah. But and then we're not we're not regening that much going down, unfortunately. Well, let's go to the Arctic Circle. We'll reevaluate okay, if we want to charge. Yeah. We'll have some different scenery. Yeah, yeah, okay. I agree. Let's get out of here. Yeah. That is a really good number. We made it to the Arctic Circle, um, and we had 55% energy left when we left um, of the camp. Okay. Uh, and we're halfway to Coldfoot, and we uh, didn't we didn't use half the power to get no, here. We didn't. And check this out: we're driving at two miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. Uh, so uh, even though this says that we're not going to make it, the navigation thinks we're off the road. By the way, let me show you. That's crazy. The navigation, look at the navigation, it thinks that, uh, you know, we're going the wrong way. It wants us to make a U-turn, believe it or not. <laughs> but anyway, the good news is I think we can make it to Coldfoot, given this new driving technique of doing, you know, between 33 and 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, and uh, turning the air conditioning and HVAC off. Well, seems to be a good strategy. That, that seems to be working. And yeah. then, most importantly, um, 
you know, just kind of moseying along, taking our time. Yeah, taking our time. It's better to be moving than it is to be sitting still. Yeah, but I, I think the good news is if we can make it given the amount of energy that we've used so far. So shall we uh, go put the sticker on the truck to celebrate? Yeah, that's right. Let's go celebrate. Great. Arctic Circle, my man. <laughs> <laughs> Only another uh, 300 miles to go. <laughs> reserve setting is two miles of charge away. What does that mean? There's oh, two. oh, I see. I mean, I think it means that it's going to cut power for us in two miles. What's well, plugged into it? No, 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 that's not cut power. It's going to mean we won't be able to use onboard power once you get down to oh. a certain, you see what I'm saying? Once, okay. you, once you get down to a certain number, it won't let you oh, okay. use the onboard power it cuts, anymore. It cuts it. Okay. Yeah. But we don't care. We're, no. we're, not, we're not using it. Well, that's kind of cool that tells you that because if you have something plugged in, like a fridge yeah. in the back, then you know you're going to lose power to it because it's going to send all the power to the drive motors. Yep, exactly. Um, so it's good that it tells you. It thinks we should be heading back. It keeps telling us to yeah. turn around. I know. It's crazy. Uh, there's only one road. We did not miss a turn off. No. <laughs> so the secret, I think, getting this two uh, miles uh, per kilowatt is to drive slow to 33, our lucky number. Yeah. Uh, and I think we should make it to cold foot with maybe no energy left. Well, that'd be perfect. I imagine there's probably a reserve. I'm hoping so. And we'll find out how much. <laughs> Because uh, we've got, uh, let's see here. So let's see how much. This is this is a real number we need to know. It's that one. So we've got 31 percent of the battery, and we have uh, 60 miles left to go. And we started out with 55 uh, percent, and we went 60 miles. And we're averaging two miles per kilowatt hour. Yeah. So multiply that by that. Yeah. You get. 62 miles and we have 60 miles to go. Yeah. <laughs> it should be a nail biter. Yeah, it will be. <laughs> and it's uh, 9 o'clock at night and the sun's still way up in the horizon. <laughs> okay. Hey David. Yeah. Driving range is now officially low. So I guess at 30 miles, it let's gives see. us a warning. Well, let's see. Let's see where we're at in terms of uh, I don't know, in terms of battery. 18 percent. Yeah. Well, there you go. Well, yeah. We've got another uh, 30 miles or so left. Plenty. Yeah, it says 26 miles to Coldfoot, 30 miles of range. Yeah. We should be golden too. Hey. Cold foot. We made it with, look, 9%. Dang. We thought we were going to run out. That means we only have to charge it 91%. And we got 16 miles to spare. <laughs> I think there's a realistic chance that tomorrow we can actually make it on one charge. Wouldn't that yeah. be crazy? Well, with, our, with our cutting strategy of right. go slow to go fast. I'm right. calling that go slow to There's go fast. Genius. <laughs> Back in civilization. So, uh, 70 amps? Mm -hmm. You rock. You can't believe how happy you made us. Thanks. I made it myself. Did you? Did you really make it yourself? No. <laughs> oh, God, oh, I believed you. <laughs> All right, we can just park it here. That's great. Yep. All right, let's go plug it in and see how long to get a full charge. <laughs> I'm so excited. excited. I've never been so excited for a charger before. It's like Christmas to get a 70 amp charger. We have a 70 amp outlet. We don't have a 70 amp charger, but we did buy a 40 amp charger, which should make a big difference. All right, let's try it. So uh, let's play a game and let's find out Take a guess before we actually end this episode, and let's find out how long you think it's going to take to take a full charge. So right now it's 11 o'clock at night here, and I'm going to say 
I'm gonna say by tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m. We're gonna have, no, I'm gonna go 8 a.m. 8 a.m. we're gonna have a full charge. So let's find out. We have, 70 amps. Yeah, hopefully we have that adapter. I'm not, I'm not certain we have that adapter. Oh, you're joking. No. Oh, don't, no, we bought every adapter in the store. Uh, yeah, but you gotta realize 240 volt, there's about 20 different sizes over the years that have been used. And uh, that's a three prong. Yeah. Look in the back, there's more adapters in there. Really? Yeah. Three prongs. Yeah, but look, that's two straights. This is two angles. All right, one more try. We don't have a three prong. Are you yeah. joking? No. <laughs> we don't have a three prong. We really don't have a three prong? No. No. We bought every we, we have we a, everything that we put We we have a three prong. It's just that the two it's not the same three prong as that. 70 amps, we have no adapter for it. And you never know because I mean that that that's not a dryer. Um that one's different than others that I've seen too, so. Well, we figured out that we didn't have the right plug extension. I was shattered, but then thanks to the kind folks at Coldfoot, we figured out that in the shed, there was actually a dryer outlet. So we took our extension and we hooked it up to the truck and guess what? Most important question, how much juice are we getting out of that plug? How many amps? Let's see if it works. Success! <laughs> We're charging. Uh, 100% at 216 p.m. Tuesday. Well, what does it say? How much power is it putting out? It'll, it'll say on the box. So it says 35 amps, uh, 38 amps, 707.8 kilowatts. So it's doing almost 40 amps. Well, that's all this can handle. Yeah, is, yeah. Is 40 amps. Yeah, it's almost doing. It's doing 38.6 amps. At, at, at eight kilowatts. So I don't know if this, I don't think it'd be any quicker in that one, would it? No, because it's this is limited to 40 watts anyway. Yeah. No, 40 amps. Or 40 amps, I mean, yeah. You know what it meant. Yeah. 200, 204 volts. Yeah. <laughs> but this thing's smart enough to be able to convert that, okay. right? Yeah. Because uh, not everywhere, you've got that band of, of voltage that it can handle. Yeah. So. We're just glad we had connectors. It's yeah. better than five days. Yeah. Because 110 it'll be five days. Yeah. So I think we just let it charge. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's our only choice. All right, guys. Well, come back next week uh, when we're still here charging. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to make lots of friends and probably look this look, big look, after we eat at the restaurant. Look, I'm, I'm hoping there's some, <laughs> there's some magic that happens and somehow the battery <laughs> charges quicker than that says it's going to charge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have some new best friends by the end of this week. 14 uh, hours. Yeah, which is what you'd expect charging off the hybrid. It, ta it would take that long. A, a little longer. So, anyway, I think we just let it charge. Yeah, because we're, we're not going to gain anything by charging off the hybrid. No, no. no. All right. We'll probably lose. So. Okay, say, we'll see you, we'll see yeah. you next week, right? <laughs> Hopefully. Right here. Yeah. We'll figure it out. <laughs> what are you Ciao. Do? Ciao. We jokingly said the next time you'll see us will be in Coldfoot, Alaska. And we didn't mean it, but we are still here because charging a truck that's all electric in a place that doesn't have any DC fast charging infrastructure is really problematic. And we ran into some massive problems last night. So we got in here about midnight. It's now one o'clock the next day. Uh, and luckily David saved the day because while I went to bed in the hotel, you stayed up and watched the truck.